The lesson for today is a little trippy because something bizarre happens which we haven't seen before. But it's a good bizarre. And it actually makes things very, very easy. Hopefully. Okay, so we're going to talk about exponential functions. We did logarithmic differentiation, then we did logarithmic integration, but now we're combining exponential functions into one lesson because of how simple it is. We're going to talk about the natural log function. By the way, the nat natural exponential function is the same thing as e to the x. So you can have an exponential function, 2 to the x, 5 to the x. When it's e to the x, it's called the natural exponential function. We're going to differentiate it, we're going to integrate it, and then you should always be kind whenever possible, and it's always possible. Anybody know? Who said that? No, good one. Gandhi. It is Gandhi. Gandhi says everything. Yeah. So does Dr. Seuss. So does Dr. Seuss. Yes. One fish, red fish, two fish. Right. I will not eat this in a box. I will not eat this with a fox. Exactly. Right. Wise man. All right, so quick review on some uh, pre-calculus stuff. What's the natural log of e to the x? X, Y? Good. I thought I got that wrong. You got it wrong. I don't know. What do you mean? No self-confidence here? Bring the X out in front. X times the natural log of E. Natural log of E is 1. How about this guy? Also just x. E to the natural log of x, they cancel each other out. We're good to go. Notice, in the first equation, I put e to the x into the function natural log of x. In the second function, I put the natural log of x into the function e to the x. Both equations gave us x, so that means they must be inverses of each other. Now we go down that path that we went down the other day with all the inverse stuff, which gives us this. They're reflections of each other over the line y equals x. We've got the natural log function over here going through the point one zero. We've got the natural exponential function going through the point zero one, because again, points change values when you reflect over the line y equals x. Domain and ranges. So notice that the natural log function, we talked about this already, but again, you cannot take the natural log of a negative number because there's nothing over here. Mm -mm. You cannot get a value for e to the x negative because there's no value you can raise e to to give you a negative answer. And again, domain and ranges switch. So the domain of the natural log of x is the same as the range of e to the x. The range of natural log of x is the same as the domain of e to the x. Okay. Let's get done with this pre-calc stuff. How do you solve that? Beautiful. My favorite trick, the natural log of both sides. No decimal equivalent, leave it, leave it exact. What's the right-hand side become? X plus, one. X plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. X is equal to the natural log of 7 minus 1. If you're, feel, if you're feeling fancies in your panties, you could type that into your calculator and get a numerical value, or you could just leave it like that. Hot diggity. Problems? You knew this already, right? Yeah. Good, let's do something new. Da, 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 yeah. Oh, look, I did it already. Oh, did I get the right answer? I did. I'm a fart smeller. Smart fella. Okay, uh, we talked about that already. Great. Okay, derivatives. This is the cool part. What's the derivative of e to the x? Well, 
as it says, we're going to do some logarithmic differentiation. So we'll start with this guy. Quick refresher on logarithmic differentiation. Step one, take the natural log of both sides. Step two, simplify. What's the natural log of E again? Again? One. One, so we, we, let's not even confuse ourselves, get rid of that. Take the derivative of both sides. Solve for y prime. Whoa, whoa! What just happened? We started with this. We took the derivative. And we ended with this. Again, what just happened? We've never seen this before. I'm sorry? Correct, which would imply what? No, there's no mistake up there. That's perfect math. Uh, no, e to the x is not the inverse of e to the x. It's its own derivative! We've never seen that before. We've never taken the derivative of something and gotten itself as the answer. You take the derivative of x squared, you get 2x. You take the derivative of the square root of x, you get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. You always get a different function. This is the first time that we've seen a function whose derivative gets us back to where we started. That's so weird. Maybe it's just because I'm a math guy that I find it interesting. Weird. What do you call me? Flip it. Weird. Oh, not Flip on it. your ear. No, no. No? Okay, good. One we did already. I just did that for using logarithmic differentiation. Step two includes the chain rule. If it's not just plain old x, you got to stick a du dx up there, also known as a u prime. So if you prefer, you could do e to the u, u prime. If it's, if it's its own derivative. By the way, is my grammar correct? Do I have the correct it's there? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't sure. That's why I went into that. <laughs> now I feel better about myself today. If it's its own derivative, what can you tell me about the integral of e to the x? Be specific. What's the antiderivative of e to the x? Bingo. Okay, let's do a couple examples here. Don't make this more difficult than it has to be. e to the u. Now remember, we're taking derivatives, so you're not doing this du, u du stuff. That's for integrals. This is just itself times u prime. Yes, just that simple. itself times u prime. I did that one in my head. I don't know if you could figure follow that, but that's you know, x to the negative 1. Bring the negative sign down. Reduce it by 1 would be negative 2, which puts it in the denominator as a squared. Yo! Are we going to have to simplify? Simplify like, what? Like multiply it out, I guess. Like, like 2. Well, you can move the 2 in front. Well, yeah, but if it's like a more complicated, like it's like 2x, you know? I do know. No. That's, uh, that's K-N-O-W followed by N-O. 
I do know K and W K N O W and no they will have to simplify it. Initially. At some point we're gonna to have to dive into these and start simplifying. Okay. Integral. Eric's already taught us this. I'll go through it quickly, in case you didn't believe Eric. If it's in the slideshow, it must be true. I wouldn't trust Eric as far as you can throw him. The antiderivative of e to the x, sure enough. E to the x. Eric wasn't lying. What's that? It's plus c. Why is it plus c? Say if I'm saying problem. Correct. Why is there a plus c there? <laughs> Notice in step two, there's no u prime there. We're covering both derivatives and integrals in the same day. Some of you are going to get confused. You're going to do crazy things like try to take a derivative using a u du problem. It happens a lot. People come over here and they say, okay, I'm going to take a derivative of this. So therefore, uh, u is equal to 2x minus 1. So du is equal to 2dx. And, and uh, no, it's a derivative. No u du's. U du's come up with these guys. So step two would have to be done as a UDU problem. It's its own antiderivative. Slicker than whale dung in a nice flow. Now you're saying to yourself, self, I got this. The antiderivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. So therefore, the answer is e to the 3x plus 1 plus c. And the fact is, that's wrong. Because it's not e to the x, it's e to some function. So this would be a problem where we would need a u du. u would be 3x plus 1. du would be equal to 3 dx. dx would be equal to 1 third du. So this would actually become one-third times the integral of e to the u du, which would be one-third times e to the 3x plus 1 plus c. No big deal, except you're missing that one-third term. And without the one-third in there, it is a completely different problem. So this is bad. Don't do that. UDUs belong with integrals. Good questions. We're done. There's an actual mathematical series of equations that will give you the bat symbol. I don't know what it is, nor do I care, but it looks tur it turns out pretty cool. I'm sorry, what? Y is undefined. Yeah, when, 10, when x equals 10. Yeah, because you're outside. Notice you're outside the picture. I don't even know why that's there. It's crazy, right? Uh, okay, this goes away. Do that. Uh, discard. Come here.